Good morning, good afternoon, folks. It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Friday, end of the work week. TGIF, right? 429, 2022. April 29, 2022 is the date. 1020 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows some movement down there into the South America region uh, with a 3.3 earthquake once again. And also some activity into the Southern California region. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here uh, from the USGS. If we can pull up the right page, there we go. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. We're going to include all the magnitudes as well up here for the states. And uh, seeing a little bit of ramping up of movement here around the San Jacinto Fault Zone. In a cluster right here. Uh, just south of... Uh, and what do we got there? Hemet area. Looks like a little bit of small microquake swarming going on in Southern California. Also some activity up around the San Andreas Fault Zone. Mostly microquakes. If we look at the 2.5 and above, you can see not a whole lot going on in the Southern California area other than those microquakes, uh, which are pretty much uh, comes to a stop right around the Ridgecrest area as we look up east. Uh, north, I should say, towards the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada. Things kind of taper off pretty dramatically. Only one or two earthquakes throughout that region. We have not seen a further increase in pressure up here in this area for a couple days now. Uh, and that includes areas in, of Nevada. This area right here around Tonopah. Even at nine earthquakes, or not nine, we could probably get rid of those three. About uh, five earthquakes or so within this region. Six. Still not that big of a deal in that area around Mina, Nevada, where we typically see that uh, pretty significant swarming going on. So things kind of quiet still along the northern part of uh, California and also western Nevada. Uh, looking up here towards the Mount Cobb or uh, Cobb Mountain area, 27 earthquakes within this region. Still Calpine operations there with their ongoing uh, generation of, of uh, energy. Oregon, Washington, look up here. Not a whole lot going on throughout this area. Man, it's just super duper quiet. Aside from a couple query blasts, um, I'm not seeing any earthquake activity showing up here on the USGS map. So that's uh, kind of why we got to go to the... Um, we can go to any specific seismographs, but I do like to check out the volcanoes up here uh, where Mount St. Helens has been having uh, uh, quite a bit of activity here over the last few days. Uh, nothing major, but definitely... A uh, multitude of some very small microquakes uh, right at the summit area, the dome station at Mount St. Helens Volcano. And uh, still continuing uh, today. Looks like there's some S waves kicking up here. Not for sure exactly which earthquake that is from. Uh, see these long, drawn out, squiggly lines. But uh, the earthquakes themselves, very localized here with these defined spikes. And uh, there's a bunch of them still. Even this morning and uh, yesterday was about the same story. Seeing quite a few earthquakes uh, kicking up here in this region of the Mount St. Helens area. Let me see here one second. So yeah, there's a, there's a, quite a few of them. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, look at, I uh, kind of want to look at a different volcano and see what they got here in the Pacific Northwest. But I do want to show you guys real quick if I can get this to pop up here. Stand by for just a second. Uh, there we go. Uh, and the last earthquake they have up here is from the 28th yesterday. And only a negative magnitude 0.2. Negative 0 0.2. Uh, and as I just showed you there on that map, the seismograph, there's definitely a lot more than one measly little earthquake. Uh, there's definitely a good handful not being reported for whatever reason. Um, checking out Mount Rainier, uh, I believe this station here has some issues, technical issues going on, um, but we'll check this one here and see what we got for the latest seismograph data at Mount Rainier in, uh, oh, there we go. Even up here, we're getting a little bit of swarming going on. Uh, there's some further S waves i got to see which one that... We'll check that out here in a second. I haven't really looked at the worldwide map in terms of earthquake activity. So it looks like there was... Had to have been at least an upper five somewhere uh, to kick off. Or maybe even a six or higher that created that S wave. 
So local seismic activity here at Mount Rainier, definitely getting in on some uh, some activity as well. Uh, seeing those spikes again show up. Some of those could be ice quakes, uh, but distinct earthquakes like that, definitely uh, localized movement. And far as the uh, reported data goes here, their last earthquake was from the 24th, uh, point two. So there's definitely been a lot more, uh, as I just showed you there over the past 24 or 36 hours of activity. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and go to the worldwide data, see what we got. Kind of curious to see which, uh, which quake that was that we're seeing. We did have a, uh, oh, that's probably at 5.6 out here along the Central East Pacific Rise. Uh, being fairly close here to the states, those waves do travel throughout the land, throughout the globe, throughout the flat map, however you want to look at it, throughout the, the dirt. <laughs> it definitely uh, creates those waves on the uh, distant seismograph station. So five pointer out there in the Pacific, 5.6 to be exact. We have seen a little bit of activity, like I said, on the earthquake 3D globe of uh, some swarming down here in between these two points here, up here in the, uh, uh, just outside of, uh, what's in the Peru area and also some movement down here in Chile but we're looking at this area right here in the subduction zone where we're seeing that swarm of twos and threes kick off here uh, we have seen a little bit of deep movement here in the South America region so still watching that area pretty closely into the Puerto Rico region uh, about a 15 earthquakes or so no major movement going on just uh, typical swarming activity uh, getting back to the states here on the eastern part of the country, Texas, or uh, central part of the country, I should say. A little bit of movement still out there in Texas, a couple twos and some activity up in Kansas. A one earthquake out here in the New Madrid zone with a 1.1, but uh, nothing going on here along the eastern part of the country. I'm uh, still kind of curious about that uh, phantom quake. I didn't have too many people key up last night and tell me they felt it, so kind of guessing that was a uh, a non-earthquake event. EMSC model, I'm not for sure if they still have it up here on the map, uh, but uh, we'll check it out. We do like to check it out and see what's going on. Yeah, they, they're actually still reporting that earthquake out there in West Virginia. So, And uh, some swarming into the Central America area, or uh, Central uh, Middle America Trench. There we go. Let's see if I can wake up here. Waiting on my coffee to really kick in, but uh, man, I think I need to start making it a little bit stronger. Seems like the older you get, the, the more caffeine you need. Uh, let's see, Western Pacific kind of spread out it's in a little orderly fashion here around Japan. Southward, got a little activity here in the Mariana Trench regions, 4.3. This one deep though, into the trench here, Mariana Trench, 250 kilometers. For that earthquake and also yesterday we've seen this further deep movement uh, onto the northern part of the trench philippine plate here 4.0 at 432 kilometers so a lot of deep scale deep movement going on here with this philippine plate and a couple areas to watch when that happens is obviously the upstream um, regions and with further deep movement areas adjacent over here along this area and that includes Taiwan and the Philippines area. Uh, movement up into the Japan Trench. Got this off the coast of Russia, it looks like. Um, for whatever reason, uh, 4.5. That one's 157 kilometers here into the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Uh, Papua New Guinea throughout Vanuatu and the Tonga area. A couple fours and uh, even a five out there south of Samoa. That earthquake uh, occurring earlier. Uh, this morning, it looks like Indian Ocean, 4.6 near the uh, Carlsberg Ridge, and a little activity up here once around, uh, again, once around the Greece area, 4.9 kicking up here. So, uh, what do we got here in Alaska? Really lighting up here with a bunch of red circles indicating recent activity here within the last hour. Getting a cluster of quakes up here outside of Denali and uh, the Cook Inlet regions. Uh, so a little swarming going on up here in the mountains. Looks like some deeper movement as well further south. Actually this one here, 90 kilometers uh, uh, way up there into the Alaska range. 
Got to remember this here is a subduction zone, Pacific North, Amer uh, North American plate. Major accumulator of some uh, slip rate and stress in that area. Hawaii, not a whole lot going on out there. It's been kind of it's been kind of dull lately, right? Over the last seven days, of course, we have earthquake activity, but even for seven days of activity, 92 earthquakes and no unusual swarms. This here is very typical. Uh, it's been ongoing there since the early 60s. So, yeah, just kind of kind of watching and waiting, seeing what's going to happen here. Yellowstone National Park, uh, not a whole lot of movement going on there either. There is the 5.6, looks like, uh, showing up on some of the seismograph stations. It's going to be this one right here. Looks like, what, uh, UTC time about 0845. See the timestamps over here for this? We'll go ahead and verify that, 0845. I just want to make sure. 08 uh, this 5.6 was 0833 so a little bit earlier you gotta remember the distance uh, somewhat the time it takes to uh, show up on these graphs 0833 830 would be around here about here so yeah somewhere around there anyway that's the uh, 5.6 out there in the uh, East Pacific rise that we are seeing show up on some of these seismograph stations. Aside from local data, local uh, earthquake activity, looks pretty calm for now. I'm not seeing any uh, tremendous swarms going on there at Yellowstone. A couple small earthquakes out here in the southwest corner of the park in Idaho. But other than that, uh, looks kind of quiet out there in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. Let's check out the solar weather data. I know uh, when I was heading to bed, I seen the KP indexes kick up a little bit into the four range, which was expected. Uh, we are expecting a further strengthening of the uh, KP index here and possibly seeing a G1 class storm kick up here later this afternoon. The detailed forecast shows us that time period uh, for a KP index of five, uh, which would be a, a G1 class storm around the 18 to 24 UTC time. So currently right now, uh, we're at about 17.32 UTC time. So here within about 30 minutes or so, we should start seeing possibly this uh, uh, incoming solar wind kick up and uh, produce the uh, G1 class storms. Current uh, solar weather conditions here shows pretty stable conditions with the BT and BZ component here. A lot of times this thing will crack open south and allow a uh, pretty significant uh, amount of solar wind to stream into the Earth's magnetic field, the atmosphere, and uh, create those awesome conditions. Right now, speed looks to be the uh, uh, somewhat leading factor. It was up above 500 last night. It has tapered down a little bit, uh, but like I said, we're expecting to see that kick up pretty soon. And... Um, We'll be watching that for a G1 storm. Nothing major, but uh, hey, any space weather is awesome in my book. Looks like uh, the global D-layer absorption map prediction here, the DRAP, shows a significant uh, frequency, high frequency blackout up here at the northern uh, latitudes way up there. I'm not seeing any major flaring going on uh, currently. Looks like we may have had, uh, let's see what we got here. Let me kick this up again. Go back here to the one day. Yesterday we had, oh yeah, we actually had an M-flare yesterday kick up. I must have missed that. That must have been after the update last night. Uh, very low M-flare. Uh, since then, pretty much continuous C-flare activity, including a recent uh, C1.9, it looks like here on the chart. Looks like it may have produced a little CME, but I'm not for sure if that's going to be Earth directed or not. Uh, looking at these sunspots, um, just not super dynamic at the moment. But uh, they're there. they are there, but they're not uh, doing anything that I want them to do. Uh, let's see. So yeah, still kind of waiting on a callback uh, from the... Well, it's not from the National Data Buoy Center, but the Australian... Um, oh, what was their site here? 
It looks like they blocked this one out. I did check this out. Oh, wait a minute. That's not, that's not even the right one here. What was I doing that? Uh, Java Trench here. This area, we've been kind of watching this station, right? It's got these variable 100 meter depth uh, adjustments, and now it's offline. And there's probably good reason for it to be offline due to the technical glitches and errors and fear mongering that it is creating out there. Um, I did message these folks here, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, and asked them what's going on, what you know, what's going on. So I did that yesterday, and sure enough, look, it's offline today. So you know, maybe they'll get to it and, and fix it, find out what's going on, because it's definitely not a whole lot of breathing underneath the water out there. We're not looking at any type of land fluctuations and volcanic eruptions underwater, because if we were, we'd be seeing that uh, worldwide. We would know about it not something they can hide if we got that type of adjustment going on there underneath the ocean so we'll see i'm waiting like i said i'm waiting on a call back they may not message me they, they may we'll see uh got a 3.5 looks like coming in right now to the new zealand area i want to check out the <clears throat> geonet servers here uh and see what's cooking out there 2.9 of course i got this 3.5 uh, from the EMSC off east coast of North Island, New Zealand. These guys are not showing that activity yet, it looks like. Um, yeah, there it is, seven, uh, seven minutes ago, unnoticed. Uh, but the EMSC is reporting it. That's going to be this earthquake offshore. Uh, north of the North Island at, uh, looks like 225 kilometers. That's pretty deep. And as you know... I've been kind of saying this uh, this area right down here, the uh, Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area, definitely hasn't moved much since all the prior earthquake activity here last week and the week before. We've seen quite a few sixes up through here, quite a bit of deep movement, with only very minimal adjustment down here through the New Zealand area. So kind of watching this region pretty closely. <clears throat> Still getting some deeper earthquake activity there, uh, like I just showed you on the GeoNet server. So kind of waiting for something above the 5.0 threshold. We'll see how that goes today. We'll be back tonight, folks. Uh, we're going to do the question and answer show tonight. I don't think we got anything uh, that's going to offset us from that show tonight. So make sure you tune in. At uh, We'll do it at uh, 6 p.m. California time, West Coast time. So that will be 9 o'clock Eastern. And we'll see how it goes, folks. So have a good day. Stay safe. We'll chat you guys a little bit later.